You also struggle with string crossing. Don't worry, you're not alone. We all struggle with it. But I have great tips and solutions for you. You can use my techniques for any study or piece that you're playing that has these string crossings. It doesn't matter if it's the legato one, so this one. Or if it's just, you know, detached string crossing. Or if it's even like three strings at once. Perfect for Bach. Huh? All right, let's get first started with the common pitfalls. So when you play pieces or studies that has these string crossings, chances are big that you, maybe not, are playing like this. Nah, you don't want that. Besides, I bet my cello on it. Actually, these are very high stakes. After playing a whole page of that stuff, your arm will hurt and will be full of tension, right? Of course, arm motion is very important when doing string crossings, especially those that have these three notes, uh, three string slurs, like this one. Here in this case, yeah, arm is very important, but we should not make it stiff, we should be able you know, it's like you're drawing a smile, naturally. So the same thing is over here. You wanna go... Don't think about the sound right now. Think first about the motion. Afterwards, you can worry about the sound. But okay, we were talking about string crossing on three strings at once. What about uh, two strings? So like this. Even here, I see people sometimes doing with the whole arm. And you see, we have this emphasis on the G string, and this is really what we don't want. We want to blend in one string to another. So here we need to find flexibility in the wrist and in the fingers. So this is very important that you're able to swim, let's say, you know, like, like a fish swimming. So let me show it in a closer uh, angle. So almost no arm. Of course, the arm helps to guide, but we're not solely based on arm, because the else we lose quality, so narrow it down. And everything without any pressure, so don't press, don't grab that bow, that stick like that. No, gently, everything is about being gentle. Let the weight of the elbow do its trick. Of course, don't play like that also. But everything very steady. Let the weight of the bow do the job and you control with your fingers and with your wrist. Also, squeezing with the thumb over here, it will block the flexibility in the wrist and in the fingers. Now I have a last step here for string crossings on uh, legato on two strings and that one is a little bit special maybe some of you are familiar with it but many of you not so what happens after when we go from one string to another i'm sure that this happens so the angle of the string so probably let's say if we're using g and d probably some of you are more angled towards the c string and then when you go to the D string, you're more angled direction to the A string. So you have a huge gap and then this happens. And then obviously, it's there where the arm comes in play. That thing that I mentioned before. Why don't you think more of blending in with each other? So make sure that the strings that you're using, it's very close. So angle more towards the D string when you're playing the G, and like this you blend in. So it's almost playing like a, a double stop, or two strings at once. Um, maybe either you can do that. So you just play first the G, and then you play nicely the two strings together, and then you fade out into the D string alone, like that. Um, It's very slow motion, obviously. Then after a while, if you dominate it, you can do it a little bit faster. One more time. Okay, let's do it even faster. Even faster. Even faster. See how smooth that is. And then we get this delicious transition between the strings. Great, an exercise to do at home. 
what you have to do is to play two strings at once and then bit by bit you are moving away from these two strings. So let's use again the example, the G and D. I don't know why I use these strings. I guess it's because they sound nicer. The A string is eh, like that. D and G is warmer. So yeah, let's do that. So we start with both the strings. Take your time. See this more as a meditation session. Then bit by bit, you wanna move one string to another. Now. Bit by bit. Still playing double stops. Now I'm gonna risk it. exercise that you can do. Okay, my friends, so this has to give you a clearer picture on how these smooth string crossings work. Yeah, but what about smooth bow changes? Well, there is another tutorial right over here where I go deeply into how to create smooth bow changes. If you need to learn more about it, well, it's there. It's all ready for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.